Uh, hi, we are here with Kimberly Trotman of uh, FDA CDRH at uh, the Medical Device Summit 2012 Supplier Quality Controls Conference. So, hi Kim. Hi, how are you? Uh, we had some follow-up questions from your presentation that you made earlier. Uh, one thing around how you need to uh, evaluate and uh, audit your internal um, suppliers was, was you know, widely appreciated by the audience. So, can you elaborate a little bit more on that? The, the big discussion for internal suppliers is the fact that they have to be controlled. How they control an internal supplier versus an external supplier can be different. So for example, they are not likely to do a formal supplier audit of a sister company, but the, the big thing, and there's preamble comments, and I would refer any of our listeners as well as the audience today to the Global Harmonization Task Force guidance document on supplier and purchasing controls because it talks about the need that a supplier is a supplier. Mm -hmm. um, even though they might be part of the same corporate structure, if they are not part of the quality management system that's directly responsible for, for that product, um, there needs to be arrangements. And those arrangements can be in the form of terms of agreements, processes, procedures. So control of suppliers that are internal to a company or corporation may be different, but they still are necessary and they're still expected under the quality system regulation under A20.50. Okay. And one thing that you mentioned was interesting. Though the component could be similar, the end product that it could be on could be in two different divisions of the same company. So they would have to be viewed as separate components then or different components then? Well again, there's so many different corporations and company structures and divisions, it's very hard to give one size fits all. So everybody has to look at their own internal situation as to how you know they're going to deal with internal suppliers and how that relates to, to their structure. But the bottom line is the finished medical device manufacturer who's responsible for that particular medical device, even though you know they, they may have a sister company that's supplying the same component to multiple different divisions, that you know facility that's using it for their purpose really needs to evaluate that for what they are going to use it for. And during the conference we talked about you know something like an antibiotic mm -hmm. where an antibiotic may be able to put on a wound dressing and that may have one intended use as compared to an antibiotic possibly used in, in a different intended use. So just because it might be the same antibiotic, there may be different issues both in manufacturing, biocompatibility, and so forth. So when you're getting a supply product from anyone, whether it be your own internal supplier or external supplier, you have to look at the intended use and as well as the risk and, and then make the, the appropriate supplier assessments. Great, great, thank you. Uh, moving on, uh, the topic of benchmarking. Uh, if you were to select three industries and say three best practices, and I, I know I'm pinning you down, but uh, just to be concise, uh, with what would you like to see medical device companies like looking for in terms of industries and in terms of practices that you think, hey, it would really benefit this industry? Well, we talked about benchmarking in the terms of trying to see what best practices are out there, both from a risk management perspective and a supplier control perspective. So obviously, we have you know, the automotive industry, the telecommunication industry, the aerospace industry. There are several industries that are out there that have been doing this type of you know, technical analysis, risk management, supplier control analysis for, for quite some time. And there's a lot of lessons learned in those industries. There's books written about that. There's organizations out there that have focus groups um, that allow people from different industries to, to mix. So whatever benchmarking you know people can do, it's wonderful. You know, benchmarking within our own industry sector, but also outside into different technologies to learn what other people have found to be good and what they have found to be so helpful. Uh, as we have developed in our industry sector to a more global product. I mean, we're not so homegrown as we once used to, and as, as the supplier controls have become necessarily global, it stresses the system, so we have to see what has worked well and not worked well for others. Benchmarking is a great way to do that with different industries. Yeah. Um, in a more global economy right now, you're seeing the increasing focus on growth in emerging markets. Uh, coming along with that are challenges of supply controls, how different countries and their cultures perceive quality and you know sticking to regulations and so on. And you know obviously there have been some challenges in the past and there'll definitely be more challenges in the future. Uh, what are companies what do they need to keep in mind and how is uh, you know your agency or FDA helping companies address these broader challenges, not just for like specific companies but for the industry in general? 
Well, the agency has many, many initiatives on, on supply chain integrity, um, counterfeiting. You know, we have many relationships with um, different foreign regulators and partners to try to highlight these challenges that you mentioned and try to find best practices and, and ways in which we can, as regulators, can, can help ensure some of the supply chain. I mean, the medical device industry, at least in you know in the U.S., we have the specific requirements under the quality system regulation for purchasing controls, and we really depend on the manufacturer to go ahead and make sure they have the assurances they need, and they need to consider uh, where is this supplier located, what is the general practices, what is the culture, you know, what type of environment is that made in to help them assess how much assurances and assessment they actually need to do in order to meet the requirements of managing the risk and, and managing good quality product. Oh, good. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank Thanks you. So much for your it's time. lovely being here. Thank, Thank you. you.